Hello, everyone. Uh, so what I wanted to do, uh, as I usually do, is go over uh, a few questions that, uh, according to the item analysis for quiz two, uh, shows that a few people uh, didn't get correct uh, and go over those questions. Uh, for the most part, people did well on the test, so uh, that was good. All right, first one, useful or most energetic characteristic x-rays produced. Uh, so we're talking about the most powerful x-rays um, in terms of energetic, right? Um, those would be by an ionization in the K-shell. So I added this image. It's not in the test. Um, if one of these two are vacated by an incoming electron from the cathode, as would happen in a characteristic interaction, one of these flies off, and then uh, a lower shell electron, either from the L, which is 12, or the M, which is minus 3, uh, would be subtracted from 69, right? So uh, if it was minus 12, it would be uh, 66, I believe, right? 69 minus 12. If a electron from the any other shell really, L, M, N, O, P, right? Any of these are already very low. So let's say the next highest would be 12. So if one of these electrons here is vacated and let's say a uh, electron from the M shell falls down, it's gonna be 12 minus three, uh, which is nine, which is much, much lower. So the most those the only useful x-rays are going to be those that come by an ionization of a k-shell electron uh, so this question here uh, is based on what the meaning is of wavelength so as the wavelength of electromagnetic radiation is increased, in other words, it gets longer, the energy of the electromagnetic radiation will go down, right? So the energy level, so we're talking about going from um, ultraviolet or let's say visible to microwave, right? When the wavelength gets longer, the energy goes down. If you look at, uh, so that's why the answer is B here. If you look at uh, visible light versus x-rays, we can see that the frequency has gone up, right? So there's more of them happening per second, but also the wavelength, which is the distance from one crest to the next, you know, you can see that the crest here to the next one is much shorter, which is why x-rays are much more uh, strong and able to ionize uh, atoms compared to ultraviolet or any of these uh, types of EM radiation. All right, and that's just described uh, in here. So uh, in addition to this video, I'll send you out the link. Um, in an X-ray tube anode disc, a high-speed electron from the filament may knock out an orbital electron. This is sounding very much like characteristic, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, the atom then fills the vacancy in this orbit by pulling down an electron from a higher orbit into the vacant slot. This is exactly what we were talking about before. An X-ray will be admitted when this happens, right? That's characteristic X-ray. Um, so why does this happen? And that's because the potential energy is lost, right? And uh, if you look down here, I kind of give you a little definition, right? The potential energy is lost because it's the binding energy uh, that kept that initial electron in orbit, right? So it's the binding energy that is transferred uh, to the electron, I'm sorry, to the photon that comes out of the patient, right? Um, all of these other ones are not correct. Kinetic energy is lost by the electron slowing down in its lower orbit. There's, there's no slowing down here. 
Internal energy is lost. I'm not really sure what that even means. The anode heats up. Th that has nothing to do with anything either. Uh, and the atom doesn't suddenly become radioactive. Right? Tungsten is not radioactive. All of the following increase the average energy of the X-ray beam. So we're talking about the beam getting harder. Um, so the answer here is uh, increased mass is the exception. Uh, let me read this out to you. As the atomic number of a potential target material for the anode increases, its ability to create X-ray photons increases as well, which is why we've learned that suitable targets are metals that have high atomic number. <clears throat> they also require high melting points, which is not discussed in this particular question. Um, so let's talk about the others on here that actually do increase the average energy, right? Increased filtration, right, or filtration versus not having any at all, is going to allow the longer wavelengths, the weaker radiation, to get absorbed. So then when you look at the beam, after you've taken away the longer wavelengths, the weaker x-rays, if you look at what's left over, the average energy goes up, right? So it's said that the beam will have a higher average energy. Also, if we increase the efficiency of the generator, it's going to have something known as less ripple, uh, which I mentioned during our lecture. And more importantly, the photons that are actually created are going, going to be closer to the actual KV that was set. So if you're using a single phase generator and you set 90 KV, you're lucky if you get about a third of that, maybe 30 or so KV for the majority of the photons created. Whereas a triple phase or a high frequency generator uh, is much more efficient and that's going to give you, if again you set 90 kV, it's going to give you photons that are actually closer to, the majority of them, closer to the 90 that you actually set. Okay, uh, Bremstrong. Bremstrong occurs at various distances, uh, that's supposed to be from, uh, from the nucleus, uh, and is responsible for blank nature of the X-ray beam. That would be polymorphic right? Polymorphic means that the beam itself has many different energy levels, right? And we know this to be true. Some of those interactions are Bramstrong, and we know that different photons are going to pop out of the tungsten atoms depending on how close the initial electron from the cathode gets to that nucleus, right? And gets caught up in that electromagnetic force. That Bramstrong alone is going to give you a polymorphic beam. But also, when we talk about characteristic, we are going to have different electrons popping out from the inner shell electrons. It's not always going to be K, like we were talking about at the very beginning. It could be K, L, M, or N, uh, for example. And those are going to create uh, very weak photons that might make it into the beam. But that is going to be why we have a beam that has many different uh, energy levels or KV levels. Homogeneous means the same, right? Isomorphic means the same. Uh, and energetic um, are just, you know, showing a lot of activity, right? So that doesn't really discuss higher energy levels. Uh, so that pretty much does it for us. Uh, I hope this will help uh, the majority of you. If you do have a question, about a question, uh, please see me uh, in the lab and we'll try to set something else. Uh, if not, send a email to radiologictech at citytech.cuny.edu and make an appointment uh, with me. Thanks everyone.